I want to talk about the electrical system on the SR20. But before I can do that, I have to explain a little bit about what a bus is. Uh, an electrical bus is essentially a way of distributing electrical power to multiple places from one or multiple sources. The most common electrical bus that you've seen in your house is uh, a power bar. You've got a power bar, it's got a plug, uh, it doesn't look too much like a plug, but whatever. You've got several sockets, and you've got a power switch right there. You can take electrical power in to the plug, and you can output it from the various sockets. And that's an electrical bus. It's a input to output distribution system for electrical power. Now that we've got that out of the way, we can start talking about the SR20 electrical system. The SR20 electrical system is fairly simple. It has, uh, well, it's not simple, but it can be explained simply. You start out by drawing a main bus. and an essential bus. Now there are other, uh, the avionics bus, the um, non-essential bus, and so on, uh, but for the purposes of the explanation we can stick with these. We'll stick with the main bus and the essential bus and that'll be enough. The main bus uh, has a battery, uh, battery one, We'll draw and label that bat one, and we'll give it a battery looking shape. And the essential bus has its own battery, battery two. And there we go. We'll give it a battery shape as well. So we've got two batteries and we've got uh, two buses. Then what we're going to do is you've also got alternators. Uh, we'll draw the alternators here in orange. Alt 1. And alternator 2. We can connect these uh, to each other. Alternator 1 is connected to the main bus. Battery 1 is connected to the main bus. Alternator 2 and battery 2 are connected to the essential bus. The main bus and the essential bus are also connected, uh, except that this connection has a isolation diode. And that's the symbol for an isolation diode. An isolation diode is essentially a one-way valve. It allows electrical power to flow from the main bus to the essential, but it does not allow power to flow from the essential back to the main. Now that we've got this, we can put some numbers in here. Uh, battery 1 is a twenty-four volt ten amp hour battery. Battery 2 is a twenty-four volt seven amp hour battery. Alternator 1 is a twenty-eight volt seventy-five amp our battery and alternator 2 is a 28.75 volt 20 oh uh, that's a mistake sorry about that 75 amps we'll get rid of the amp hours that's only for batteries that's more like it 20 amp alternator the batteries uh, are rated in amp hours the alternators simply output amps not amp hours my mistake Let's say that we have a piece of electrical equipment and it's attached to uh, the main bus and we'll say that piece of equipment is the flaps. We'll say that we've got another piece of equipment and we'll say it's the stall warning. So you've got the flaps attached to the main bus, they're receiving their power from the main bus. You've got your stall warning system attached to the essential bus, and it's receiving its power from the essential bus. Let's also put on uh, the switch console for the aircraft. So we'll label this as uh, 
bat 2, bat 1, alt 1, alt 2, and the avionics master switch. Now, under ordinary circumstances, the electrical equipment on board the airplane is being powered by the highest available voltage. In this case, the flaps are going to be powered by the highest available voltage, which in this case is alternator 1. Oh, sorry, alternator 1. Alternator 1 is running at 28 volts. Battery 1 is only running at 24 volts. Alternator 1 will be what powers the flaps. You might be wondering, why is alternator 2 not powering the flaps? Well, even though it's running at 28.75 volts, it can't get past the isolation diode. So the flaps are only going to be powered by Alt-1 in this case at 28 volts. The stall warning system, on the other hand, the stall warning system will tend to be powered by alternator 2 because alternator 2 is running at 28.75 volts. Battery 2 is only running at 24 volts. The stall warning system does have access to alternator 1, 28 volts, however 28 volts is less than the 28.75 coming from alternator 2. So alternator 2 will take precedence and will power the stall warning system. Now, let's see what happens if we turn off alternator 2. Say we disable it completely by flipping the switch off. Alternator 2 is no longer producing any voltage whatsoever. For that reason, with alternator 2 not producing voltage, the stall warning system will tend to be powered by the new highest available voltage. In this case, 24 volts of battery 2, 28 volts on the alternator 1, or 24 volts on battery 1. The choice is clear. The stall warning system will be powered by alternator 1, passing through the main bus to the essential bus, and then to the stall warning system. What happens if Alt-1 fails? Well, if Alt-1 fails, 28 volts is no longer available. The stall warning system will continue to be powered by alternator 2, just like before. So the stall warning system is powered by alternator 2. The flaps don't have access to alternator 2 because of the isolation diode, and they'll tend to be powered by battery 1. So battery 1 is going to power the flaps. What happens if both uh, alternator 2 and battery 2 die? Well, in that case, the stall warning system I uh, will turn that off, there we go. The stall warning system will still tend to be powered by alternator 1. Get rid of that. What happens if both battery 1 and alternator 1 die? Well, if both battery 1 and alternator 1 die, the stall warning system will, once again, still be powered by alternator 2. The flaps, on the other hand, will have no source of electrical power. Alternator 1 is no longer available, battery 1 is no longer available. Alt 2 and battery 2 have never been available due to the isolation diode, so the flaps will no longer work in this case. If at any time you need to figure out whether or where a piece of electrical equipment will be powered by, ask yourself what the highest available voltage is to that piece of equipment. Whatever the highest available voltage is, that's what is going to be powering the piece of equipment.